I'm calling you to see what's, uh, what the students are asking you about the AS degree in computer programming and analysis. When they first come to you, what, what's the first thing that you tell them to go and do? First thing I always verify, one, are they declared as an associate in science degree in computer programming, and what is their catalog year? Yes. It's very important for associate in science degrees because sometimes the requirements could be potentially change from year to year. So we always want to make sure they're following their proper program sheet and checking off the courses on their declared catalog year in their program sheet. So when they declare their major, that establishes their catalog year. When they declare and that, and that can be done in two different ways. One, when they first, first are admitted to Valencia, they're placed on the catalog year of the year that they were admitted. Or if they change their major to computer programming, whatever that catalog year would be, would be their, would be the curriculum they would be following. Right. Can they switch to a newer catalog year? You can always upgrade your catalog year to a newer one. You can never go back to an older one, but you can always upgrade to a, a, a future. A, the current or um, future catalog years. Yeah, that's really important because if they if they aren't declared in the right major, so they, they can't be working on a catalog that's more than five years old ever. That's correct. Let, let's talk about the, the kinds of questions that come to you as an advisor and the kinds of questions that should go to the faculty members. I get a lot of questions because people assume just because I advise for computer programming, I know how to program. Yeah. And I, um, I know it may shock you, but I really don't know much about Java programming or C programming. For those technical questions about what's going to happen in the classroom, what kind of languages, what kind of software do I need, I do refer to the faculty members or the program director. Who, who teach who teach those courses. Yeah, that's a good idea. But for questions about how to meet the requirements and how to deal with problems, getting enrolled and things like that, all of that comes to you? Absolutely. I look yeah. at myself as, as an advocate for students who yes. need to learn or understand how to navigate the Valencia system. It always happens that someone forgets to apply to graduate. Oh, yes. But they, we do send out, as career program advisors, reminders yes. uh, about registration, about graduation deadlines. Mm -hmm. Also, if students read their Atlas email on a regular basis, all this information is sent through their Atlas emails yes. as well. So you really do need to an eye on your Atlas email on a regular basis. Yeah, that's a requirement. Let's look at the program sheet uh, and just kind of go through the degree requirements. The first thing I do when a student comes into my office is, one, I verify how they're declared in their record. What is your major? What is your catalog year? To make sure we're following the right catalog year. And I, and I simply go over what's required for the 63 credit program. Right. Students are in developmental courses for reading English and math. And although they don't count towards the 63 credit, credit requirements, they're getting them pre prepared for their English and math requirements. So... They have to take their their prep classes before they take any of their 1,000 level classes? Once they take what's now called the PERT, which is our the test they take in the assessment office to determine where they are in math, reading, and English, wherever they're placed, if they've been placed into developmental courses, those are the first classes that they must register for before they can register for any other courses. Right. So the, the course, the degree requirements are divided into foundation, intermediate, and advanced. Do the students think that they have to finish all of the foundation before they go into the intermediate? Absolutely. People think yeah. they start with foundation and start checking them off one right after the other. Yeah. But what I explain is through their educational plan, there are other strategies that you have to take in order to efficiently move through your program. And there are other things that you can earn besides your associate in science degree, such as the technical certificates. So we look to see what courses are required for the technical certificates. How can you get those completed as soon as possible to earn these certificates while you're pursuing your AS degree? So no, you don't have to check them one after the other. There's a strategy and a way of thinking through your educational plan. 
The technical certificates are, are what we call stackable certificates. The shorter length certificates, all of those credits apply to the longer length certificate, and then all of those credits apply to the AS degree. I'm not sure that everyone really understands that. They think that they're either doing the technical certificate or they're doing the AS degree. Correct. And smaller certificates are embedded within the larger certificates, and the larger certif certificates are ultimately embedded within the AS degree requirements. Right. So, of the 63 credits, some of them are really obvious. I mean, you have to take Intro to Business. There isn't any option for that. And then some of them get a little bit more complicated. In, at the intermediate level, you can take C or Java or Visual Basic or C Sharp. And the intermediate courses, you do have a, four courses that you can choose from to earn the three credit requirement, which would be C programming, Intro to Java, Visual Basic, or C Sharp. So you can choose one out of those four choices to earn three credits. Yeah. However, if you still want to take Java, even though you've completed C programming, you can still do that because that will apply to the 10 credits you have as that you need to complete for the computer programming analysis electives. Okay, so the CPNA electives, I could take extra language classes. And I think that as a, as a faculty member, that's what I would advise if they really are going into programming that although they, they aren't forced to ever take more than one language path, they really should take a couple so that they have comparative, comparative studies of different languages. In some ways, I'd like to force everyone to do exactly what I want, but we left um, 10 credits in there of electives within the field of computer programming and IT so that they can follow what they're really interested in instead of us prescribing every credit that they would have to take. So that's why there's some ORs in there and there are 10 credits of electives. Um, how are they doing with understanding what the internship is? Do they ask you about that? I always get questions about the internship, which I encourage because having an internship is a great opportunity to get, to get that experience that people are always looking for when you go out to the workforce. What's the number one thing you see in an advertisement experience needed? Well, yeah. an internship gives you that experience while you're in school that will help you get your foot into the door. And what I always tell students, it's my suggestion to leave that internship for their last semester because once you're done with your internship and you'll be ready to graduate, if you do a great job, they may want to hire you and right. then you'll be done the next semester. It all it often happens that they do get hired by the company where they do their internship and it, it, it works out really well. The internship has a course number CIS twenty nine forty two and the students think that all they have to do is go and register for that course number and then they find out that they can't. I always tell students it's a process and you should start this yeah. process at least two semesters before you want to actually do your internship yeah. for a couple of reasons. One, you have to attend an information session that's held by the internship office. Yeah. Two, you have to update your resume, identify some internship sites. It's, it's like looking for a job and it's not going to maybe be a week process. So the internship, there's an internship and placement office on each campus and right. the, the students really need to be going to that office to find out how to get involved in the internship process or they could start at the website. Um, Absolutely. There's a Actually. website and they give the dates of when the question and answer sessions are being held and so even though it has a course number it's not really something that you just register for and then wait to find out what room you're supposed to go to. Uh, it's not a classroom experience. <laughs> it's a in the workplace. In the workplace. Yes. Yes. And 80 hours in the workplace is one credit hour in the yes. internship class. Right. So they can do one, two, three, or four credits depending on what kind of a deal they get with their internship employer. Maybe they would want to use more credits towards their degree. Mm. Under your computer programming and elective area, it's 10 credits. Well, most of our classes 
or three credits. So you had that one extra class credit that you needed an elective. So if you could get two hours of an internship or do one credit of an internship, it will it could be applied to the elective area as well as you have a, a choice between internship or job search for one credit. So there are different areas within your program requirements where that internship could fall. Yeah. Well, I think we should talk about the capstone class a little bit. People look at that and say, what's that thing all about? <laughs> well, the capstone class is a class that everyone has to take to graduate in the AS computer programming or the AS in computer information technology. It's a great opportunity for students to work on projects as a team. Yes. Working on teams doesn't happen a lot in the courses up until this one. And there are some group experiences, but then when you do the capstone, the whole semester is you're on a team and you have your objectives for your team and you have to understand how to work together and how to manage a project and you're responsible for presenting that project. Um, so orally you make presentations of the project in front of the class and you're required to do writing. So there's some what we call soft skills. So speaking, uh, working on teams, writing, technical writing, which is a little bit different from creative writing. All of those things get put into that class and you learn these soft skills throughout the semester of implementing a, a team project. Okay, is there anything else we should talk about with the AS degree? Well, a couple of things. Speaking of my life math, at students, we offer assistance for educational planning. Mm -hmm. So we have in the My Life, Life Map Suite, there's something called My Educational Plan, where students can outline their plan, uh, place their courses in semesters. And one of the biggest questions I always get, well, how long will it take me to finish this program? Once they complete their educational plan, they'll see when they'll be finished with their program, right. what, what semester, what year. And once they do their plan, they can bring it to me and we can review it for validity to make sure it's the best plan possible. So we always suggest doing my education plan. They drop in the classes that they intend to take each semester mm -hmm. and make sure that they've covered all of the 63 credits. Well, I, I just want to thank you for taking the time to talk to me about the, the AS degree requirements and the kinds of things that the students have trouble with. How would the students get in touch with you um, if they are a West Campus AS computer programming major? Um, could they come to your office or do they call you on Skype or how do they meet with you? I, per, I do schedule appointments. Uh, so you can either schedule an appointment to, to visit me in my office or we could schedule an appointment to Skype. Yeah. So either, either way, um, an appointment would be required, but if it's convenient for a student to Skype, I would, I would uh, be happy to do that. Okay. Some of the online students have a real hard time getting to the campus to have meetings with the advisors and other people. Or a student, if they have a question, they can always email me their question, including their Valencia ID, and I'd be happy to correspond with them Right. email. I do that really probably more than see students face to face. Right. The Valencia ID is really important because it's very hard to know who the person is if you don't have their ID. That's and correct. I know that a lot of departments around the college require that the students communicate using their Atlas, Atlas email. email account. It's the official form of communication between students and faculty and staff, so they really do need to email from their Atlas account. Yeah. I appreciate this opportunity, and if students have any questions, don't hesitate to email me, make an appointment with me, get their questions answered, or Skype. Or Skype. Now we have this new way of doing it, face-to-face. Face-to-face. Bye for now. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>